Our first speaker is Matt Jubinski, and he is talking about FPGAs in open source hardware. Let's start with talking about FPGAs. And the motivation is that our CPUs haven't been going faster for a while now. And the limitations of the CPUs haven't been disappearing either. For instance, we have a finite number of functional units. So if we would like to perform operations which require arithmetic operations like addition and loading data from memory, we can make them faster up to a point. We have only so many ALUs on a CPU. We have only so many load store units. So even though we have instruction level parallelism, the limits of the instruction level parallelism limit the concurrency we may achieve. And in practice, the trade-off is that CPUs are very general purpose, but the hardware that they offer to us is fixed functionality. If you have that many ALUs, you cannot change them to be something different. Sometimes we don't need flexibility at any cost. Sometimes we are willing to pay those trade-offs in a different direction. And the offer of PGS is that we can make our own functional units with lookup tables and flip-flops. And it really started in 1985 from Xilinx, which was made from only 85,000 transistors. Since then, we have gotten more transistors on the FPGA. We have gotten faster FPGAs, and the price and power requirements have gone down. We probably all heard about the applications like Microsoft Bing, being able to go through entire Wikipedia in a fraction of a second. We are also now having applications of Xilinx FPGAs used in the Baidu search engine. And the way to program those FPGAs is to use the so-called hardware description language. And really every word matters here. It's hardware description language as opposed to software programming language. And those things have really nothing to do in common. The analogy is really closer to analog, uh, to digital circuit design. It just happens that instead of using the CAD tool and laying out the schematic on a diagram, we happen to express this in a test, which looks a little bit like a programming language, but it's still an expression of a circuit a digital design. Three main hardware design, hardware description languages are Verilog, System Verilog, and VHDL. They do have standards, IEEE standards, but it's a little bit different than C++ in that the support for those standards are among tools is very diverse. Think about C++ in the early 1990s and porting between Turbo C++ and GCC or EGCS. That's kind of where we are. But how does it look in practice? Say if you would like to have an adder of your own. It's going to be a full adder, so it's going to take number A, number B. It's going to take carry in. As a result, it's going to produce the sum of those numbers, and it's going to produce carry out on a CPU, you would have a processor which goes through the instructions, fetching one instruction by another from instruction memory, operates on the data memory cell by cell, and goes on and on in a sequence. On an FPGA, you don't have any instructions or any interpretation going on. You can directly lay out the hardware that corresponds to the implementation of the other that you would like to have. And to give an example in system Verilog, it's basically there are two kinds of logic that we start with, combinational logic is where the inputs depend only on the combinations of the outputs. So if you have something like AND gate, you have one bit input A, one bit input B, and you take A and B, and this is your output. You only have combined those inputs to produce the outputs, and this is all you have done. That's combinational logic. In contrast, if you would like to also have some kind of memory, say you are implementing a finite state machine, maybe you are making your own simple CPU, and you transition from one state to another, what you need is to have sequential logic, which is combinational logic plus memory. And we can start with the simple inverter design. So inverter is an implementation of a node gate. It takes one bit input, and it produces one bit output by negating the input. This is called continuous assignment because it happens continuously when you turn it on and you connect it or place it on a given hardware, it happens all the time. You can also implement this as a procedural using the always comp block, and it is often preferred to use this block. Then, already from the simple design, we can demonstrate a test bench. When we run this, we go through the entire flow, and what is interesting now is that we have a fully open source flow from Verilog to Bitstream, for field programmable gate arrays of IS40. 
So every single thing that you see here, whether it's Verilog synthesis, whether it's place and route, whether it's configuring the bitstream and the particular details of how the bitstream is going to be implemented are fully documented, fully open source. Uh, Yozes, for instance, is also a C++ application. So if you have ever wondered how to implement the Verilog toolchain in FPGA, then you can also play around with this code and contributions are welcome. So finally, as an example, I will give a simple example. You can look at this not gate in the waveforms, and you can see indeed that it flips 0 to 1 and 1 to 0. Looking at the diagrams, you can see that it utilizes one lookup table. But I think it's more interesting to just show this in example. So I have brought one here. And the digital design that we have is basically saying, hello, meeting C++, where lighting two LEDs is saying hello, and lightning three final LEDs is saying meeting C++. And this is already pre-configured, so I can just plug this one in. And as you can see, it works immediately. It remembers the program. So it's very easy. You can start right now. It's a very inexpensive piece of hardware, and it's all open source. And as the next step, if you would like to learn more, then the projects I would recommend are exactly open source hardware projects. So from a very, very simple basic CPU that is actually going to fit on this exact same board, you can see how to implement the CPU. The instruction set architecture is RISC-V, which is also a fully open set instruction set architecture. You won't get sued if you will try to sell a CPU design with this instruction set architecture. It doesn't hold for any other architecture, I think, with certainty. The GitHub projects implementing a very small 32-bit core that would fit on this exact board is available on GitHub. There is uh, quite a lot of more Risk five open source projects. There is even a startup which commercializes this. And if you would like to find out more how to make your own web server, your own GPU, network card, or another CPU in FPGA, then slides will be available. And you can also ask me any questions after the talk.